Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today I'm working on the CR6 SE and I've got this little problem with it. I'm printing some Polymaker Polymax Polycarbonate PC filament, which is a high, high temperature filament to print at. And lo and behold, I've got a blockage. And in fact, I've had to stop the print. And I hate wasting filament. I'm sure you're exactly the same. So luckily for me, MicroSwiss have sent me this. Yes, that's absolutely right. It's the CR6 All Metal Hot End, uh, which has just come out onto the market. I know there's a few videos that have been made out there already, but of course I didn't just want to jump on top of stuff that's already been made out there, and I decided instead to wait for it to have an issue. So, as I say, uh, this literally tops out, I think, at 265 degrees. The uh, Polymax PC can actually print up to, or the maximum temperature it's saying is 270 degrees. So I can push it as far as I can, but the blockage has still remained and the print was going pretty well actually. Of course there's not a lot I can do about this particular problem now so we're just going to have to rip the print off again and start again and install the micro Swiss hot end. So here we go. So with the print removed and I'm going to unplug it as well because we don't want any power issues. We're going to take the micro Swiss and let's do a quick unboxing. Here we go we've got step-by-step -step instructions which can be found over on this particular website. There we go. Okay back to the printer. So we have the all metal hot end, which absolutely looks the business, I've got to say. They've done a very, very good job on this. I've not used one of these before, uh, but out of the kindness of their heart, while I was talking about the community firmware previously with Sebastian, um, I reached out to Microsoft to ask a little bit about this because I heard it was in the works. And uh, I know Tripod has used it on one, of, one or two of his machines in the past, so um, fair play to them. So we've got a hot end block here as well. We've got the sock. We've got a lovely little sticker here. Very nice. Let's put that over there. Uh, we've got a wrench. We've got a little copper or brass part there as well. And we also have a Mark 8 nozzle. Excellent stuff. Okay, so let's start by, first of all, removing this little clip from the top. And then what we're gonna do is undo these two little screws here and here with the little Allen wrench. Sorry if I'm blocking that. So there's two screws here and here. And just be careful with the strain gauge. And of course you will have a fan attached to this as well. So make sure that doesn't get too tangled up. The screw that I've just dropped is here. There we go, okay. So the next thing we're probably gonna do now is remove this part here. And I doubt very much I'm gonna be able to take too much more out of that without heating it up. So I'll whip the fan off very quickly because I'm assuming that that's gonna be going back on. And of course, I would suggest that you read the instructions fully, unlike me. But I figured I'd break this one down first and then I would then take a look at the instructions and see how that all looks. Move those bits out of the way. And here's our strain gauge here as well. We've got to be very careful with this because these do tend to be a little bit pernickety um, from time to time. Let's head over to the website and see what we can find on there then. Okay, so we're on the Micro Swiss website and we've just selected the PDF and it'll basically talk us through how to do that. So like we've done already is we've removed those couple of screws. We're also then going to be taking off the fan shroud, heat this part up in order to get these little elements out and make sure there's no filament in there job done uh, use a six mil wrench to remove the stock nozzle well we're going to literally just pull the whole thing apart anyway so they don't really need to do that particular bit uh, this clip is going to have to come off as well hopefully you can see that uh, strain gauge undo that whip the uh, thermistor and heater out which we've already done okay so assembling the hot end Again, all we need to do here is put the thermal brake into the heating block, install the nozzle, reinstall the heater cartridge and thermistor, install the hot end onto the carriage plate. Okay, so this is a critical step because it says it in red, but if you heat your nozzle up to 220 and then just give it a little tweak, just give it a tiny little tweak there and just make sure everything is put together because otherwise you will get a little bit of seepage from the nozzle, which is nothing short of annoying. And then finally, let it cool down. Install the silicon uh, sock, tighten everything up and whip it back together again. Very easy, simple stuff, right? Hopefully you can see this. So in order to remove the thermistor and the heater cartridge as well, which you can see on the side here, 
if we can get some zooming in. Uh, there are two small Allen parts here, um, screws that plug into that. All you need to do, tiny little uh, Allen wrench, and those two will whip straight out. If you get stuck on this one, which is the thermistor, you can push that through, and that will just slip out the end. There we go. This is the thermal brake, and what we're going to do is we're going to pop that straight into the heater block. Uh, this is where you want to put the nozzle in, so you've got four points on this side, and on this side there's just the two, so we're just going to screw that in just like that. Then we're going to take this little wrench and we're just going to make sure that's nice and tight in there. Just like that. Yeah, that's all good. Okay. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to take the nozzle. I'm just going to put this in sort of finger tight for the minute. Because when we heat it up, that's the time that I like to try and then... Uh, make sure that they are nice and tight and pushed together. Okay, so next we are going to pop the heat brake and the hot end onto the cooler end. And we're gonna take this little grub screw that's here. And hopefully, this is super fiddly, so sorry if you can't really get a good grip on what we're doing here. I'm just gonna pop that just loosely onto that for the minute. So, the grub screw is just basically on there now. So in order just to make sure that that's nice and straight, all I've done is just laid it on the bed here and just given it a little tweak. And the block, the heater block part actually sits forward um, and it's mounted forwards. And if you look at this little uh, hex nut here, that's facing forwards as well. So next thing we're gonna do then is just pop the little heater cartridge in along with the thermistor. There we go, easy and then grab the little wrench again give that tighten up yeah so going back to the thermistor cables i'm not a massive fan of those cables i know they looking at it now they do look slightly protected but i prefer for that to be encased if uh, if that was going to be a change that i would make to that especially with some of the electrical problems that i know one or two users have had with this particular unit so there we go You've got your heater and your thermistor all plugged in, ready to go. Again, we need to tighten up the nozzle once we've, uh, once we've completed that. So the next thing is going to be to pop this little brass part on here and then to screw this on top. Now, the PTFE tube, of course, will be inserted through here. And then, of course, you just reattach these with the, uh, with the left and right. So I'm going to quickly do that now. So I would suggest at this point, it's probably a good time to put the uh, thermal sock on. And let's just move this in to what we've got here then. So we should probably start off by doing a calibration. And let's start with the auto bed leveling. Okay, so that's now finished. So the really good news about this community firmware, of course, is that I can now do a PID tune directly from uh, the UI. So I'll put that at 230 degrees uh, and we hit the button and we start tuning. Simple as that. Okay, so now we start printing. This is the Polymax PC, which is a, a polycarbonate filament, uh, 1.75 and 750 grams. Printing temperature is 250 to 270. The CR6 SE actually tops out at 260 with a printing speed between 30 millimeters per second and 50. I think most of my prints are actually printed a little bit slower than that, maybe around 20 millimeters per second for this particular type of filament. And of course, we're not using any kind of special uh, heat enclosures or anything like that. We're basically taking a very, very stock standard machine and obviously changing it up to make sure that it's able to print with some more of these exotic filaments. One thing to note as well, you do need to switch the cooling fan off. And one of the more interesting elements of this particular type of filament as well is the annealing process. So once this is printed, what I'm gonna do is warm my oven at home up to 100 degrees, and I'm gonna pop this in at 100 degrees for one hour. And this allows the print to harden 
and uh, it should be more durable overall. So from an engineering point of view, the tensile strength, bending strength and impact strength has obviously been tested. The Polymaker PC is an engineering PC filament combining excellent strength, toughness, heat resistance and print quality. It's the ideal choice apparently for a wide range of engineering applications and I've certainly got to agree with that because it does look and feel very very strong indeed and as soon as I put this uh, gearing into my new robot we will certainly see that the proof is very much in the pudding. Several days later. If you've made it this far then congratulations. Uh, I've got some good news. I've had some really really successful prints actually and um, over the past couple of days because obviously these things do take a little bit more time. Power of editing though it's looking good. So overall the PC filament is super super strong and Brilliant. In fact, I've printed a lot of different things out on this for a few parts that I'm making at the moment, including these bits and pieces. Now, I did say in the video as well about making sure that your fan is switched off, and I did get a little bit of warping when that didn't happen. But as I say, these things are crazy strong, and you know, you're going to need a hammer to probably to break that. And what I'm building at the moment is a drive system for a robot that I'm currently working on, which, if I just grab this, this is the track system for, and this is uh, Polymaker uh, TPU that uh, I printed out a couple of weeks ago. Actually, it's probably more like a couple of months ago now. And this is the drive system. So what I'll do very quickly is I'll just whack this on. And what happens here is there's a planetary gearbox inside of this. So there's a drive shaft that drives into three different gears, drives into another gear, and then it drives into this top gear, which will then eventually connect to this particular part. So it's important that these parts are strong because the tension coming out of it is pretty quick, pretty quick. Uh, certainly there's, there's plenty of talk there obviously to drive that track system. So a couple of people I need to thank and just give a little nod to, um, 3D Lack for sending me some of this. Uh, I've used this on the bed for these particular prints and it does adhere really, really well. Polymaker obviously for supplying me and giving me a load of support with this. 3D Filler Print as always for sponsoring my channel. Uh, who else have I got to thank? Um, Micro Swiss, obviously. Micro Swiss, you're awesome. Thank you so much for providing this to me. And, you know, it really does change the way that, um, you know, we print. And, you know, those stock nozzles um, on the majority of the Creality range are pretty poor. It's great for printing maybe things like PETG and PLA. But for these more exotic filaments, you know, these machines aren't really designed to do that. However, modifying them with nozzles just like the ones provided by Micro Swiss, you'll be able to print at this level, which is awesome. So anyway, guys, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit the like button. If this has helped you out in any way, shape or form, leave the comments below and we will see you next time with more robot fun and games. Bye for now.